This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be continuing with our Planet Ring Mesh project from last week, but I wanted to get into this idea of um, kind of getting real-time response from your project and how you can edit meshes in edit mode in Unity. There's a few things that can kind of trip you up when you're doing this, so I wanted to kind of go through those and kind of show you my learnings as I've gone through this project myself. So right now in our project, what we have is we have this um, planet ring script, and we can modify things, but we don't even see the ring itself until we actually go into play mode. And if we want to change anything likewise, we, we don't see anything change here. We have to, you know, kind of stop, edit our numbers, and then hit play again, see what's going on. It would be really nice if we could just do this right as we're... Um, in edit mode, you know, as we change the numbers, see the ring actually change for us. And so we're going to look at how to do that, um, how to do that now. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to jump into our planet ring script. The very first thing we need to do is really look at how we are having our script work here. We have this first part of our start um, method that creates the ring object for us, and then the second part that actually kind of customizes the mesh of that object. And this part here, we should really only need to do if we don't have the ring object there already. In theory, like right now this works fine as it is because when we start the when we start the game up, enter play mode, we don't have a ring object, we need to create it every time. But if we are starting to call this, you know, every time we make an adjustment to our numbers, this is only going to be called at the very beginning when we don't have an object at all, and then we're just going to really be building this mesh every time. So, first thing we're going to do, let me zoom in a little bit here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of break this out into two separate methods. The first one I'm going to call void set up ring, and the second will be void build ring mesh. Both pretty self-explanatory. So for the first one, I'm going to copy all of this content here, cut it out, and paste it into the uh, setup ring, because this is all the stuff creating the um, object itself, setting its transform, and kind of setting up these variables, um, these references we have here. And then everything else, all of this that goes into creating the arrays that create the mesh, we're going to cut and paste into here. Now I can actually get rid of this start method. We're not really going to be using it. Um, you don't actually ever call or don't have a start of your scene in edit mode, so we don't need that. We will be adding a couple others um, a little bit later, but right now we're just going to start with that. And so that really, like I say, separates this out into the two basic things that we're doing. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a quick um, attribute here, and I'm going to put this on top of the entire planet ring, and this is going to be execute in edit mode. And what that does is lets these uh, methods run not just when we're playing our game, but also when we're just in the Unity editor. Now right now there is nothing that's actually calling either of these, so nothing is going to happen. I can go back to Unity and we see that nothing is happening here. So what we need to do is we need to create some kind of time, What we need to determine what times do we want the ring to be created and um, the mesh to be set up. And there's really two situations. One is when we first create or add a planet ring to a planet object, we want that to appear right away. And that's going to be what's going to happen on what's called on enable. Because when you first create that object or create that component, um, even in your when you're in edit mode, that is considered to be enabled. So we can call it there. So we'll say void on enable. And we're going to do these two things. We're going to set up our ring. And we're going to build the ring mesh. Now, on enable also will get called like at the start of a scene. So, or if we you know happen to enable the component um, at a different time. So we do want to make sure that if we already have a ring there, we're not continually setting up the ring every single time we're enabled. So I do want to quickly add a quick check here to say if ring equals null or if ring mesh equals null. And this is because with some of the stuff we're going to be doing in this, um, the ring mesh may or may not continually be referenced. So we want to double check that. And we're going to say, so if 
either of those cases are true. If the ring doesn't exist according to this uh, script, or if the ring mesh doesn't seem to exist, only then will we set up the ring. But we will always build the mesh out because those numbers may have changed and we want to make sure that's up to date. Likewise, we want the mesh to change when we change the values um, in our inspector. And Unity includes a method call for that called onValidate, which will always be called when you um, change any values in your inspector and it's kind of validating, make sure that everything that you've put in there is an appropriate value. You're not putting letters into an int uh, variable, for example. And we're just going to call these same two. Oops. Oh dear. There we go. We're going to call these same two um, methods with the same if check there. So with that, we can jump back over to Unity and what we should see start to happen is this ring appears. However, we also, you'll notice down here, are getting an error in our console. This is saying instantiating, instantiating mesh due to calling meshfilter.mesh during edit mode. This will leak meshes. Use shared mesh instead. What all this is saying is that in our setup ring right here, when I am uh, creating this mesh reference, Using just the kind of unique mesh to the object actually kind of creates and instantiates a mesh assigned um, to the mesh, as, as, as it's explaining here in the uh, tooltip. So what can happen there is you can start like creating mesh after mesh after mesh and just kind of pooling all these meshes and it, you know, creates a bunch of them that you don't need. It kind of creates garbage that's going to have to get collected eventually. But when you're in edit mode, that can just kind of build up. So instead of doing all this here, we're actually going to change how we refer to our mesh. We're going to delete this line altogether, in fact. And after all of this, I'm going to, we're going to create a mesh in a different way. Instead of having ring mesh be something that we get, we're actually going to create our own ring mesh and then assign it. So we'll say ring mesh equals a new mesh that's only ever being created when we create it right here in the setup ring method, and then we'll assign that to ring mesh filter, which we created that reference up here, dot shared mesh is going to equal that new ring mesh that we created. And that will now stop. Um, I don't think it'll auto clear itself, but that now stops that um, error from being called. With that in place, we should actually be able to see our ring kind of dynamically change. If I increase this inner radius, we see that it starts to expand further and further out. And if I reduce it, it goes in. I can increase the thickness. And I can also modify the segments. However, now you notice I can increase these segments, becomes a very kind of high resolution, if you will, ring. However, well, notice there's going to be an issue if I start to reduce the number of segments. We notice that it kind of looks like a pie graph or something going down, and we're getting this new error here. Mesh.vertices is too small. The, supp the supplied vertex array has less vertices than are referenced by that triangle array. So what's happening here is we're reducing the number of segments, which reduces the number of vertices, but we are still have a triangles array that's looking for the full set of vertices we originally had. Now, this is kind of a little bit of a pain in the neck. It seems like something that mentally I would think wouldn't be happening here because this is all happening within one method call. But when you change vertices first and it becomes too small, all of a sudden triangles um, has this issue that it can't, um, it's not getting the, the vertices it needs. However, if we were to just flip these around, in fact, I can flip these around and we can see what will happen. If I go like this, and we jump back here. I can now reduce the number of triangles or the number of segments and that works fine, but now if I try to start adding them, same problem happens again, it's just in reverse. So we do have to put in a little bit of, a, um, of an if check here just to see which way we want these to be going. So I'm gonna say if vertices.length is less than 
the ring meshes. So this is the vertices dot length that we've just created our new uh, based on the number of segments we've set. If that's less than the existing vertices dot length, then we can set the triangles first. Else, we need to do these in reverse. So we'll cut or we'll copy vertices and put that in first, and then we'll do triangles. There, I will suspect that there is a way to do this where you hold off on building the mesh until these have all resolved themselves. I am not familiar with it at this time. If I find out, I will certainly add an appendix to this video um, to clarify that. But right now, I mean, it adds a couple of extra lines to your code. But it, this will work now that we can save this, jump back over here, and we can add and subtract, and it does not create any new calls for us. I'll clear this out, and you can see that we are now able to add and subtract um, segments, and we don't have any issues there. Now this all also works if we hit the play button. We can see that this also works in our um, play mode. However, we've once again encountered another issue that's appearing, and that is that when I hit the play button, we created a brand new ring. The reason for this is because of how Unity serializes objects and things and serializes references, once you enter play mode, it kind of clears the slate of things and goes, oh, I don't have a ring. My ring is null again, and so I'm going to create a new ring, which of course we know we had a ring, but Unity doesn't know that inherently. So we start adding new rings to our list here. In fact, if I stop play, hit it again, same thing happens again. We add yet another ring. Now, when it goes back to edit mode, I think it goes back to kind of what it originally had and remembers that very first ring that it had. But every time we enter play mode now, we're going to keep on creating ring after ring after ring. So what we need to do is in our ring setup method, we need to kind of have a quick check just to say, hey, um, you know, if if I don't know that I have a ring and, I, and there's no ring objects under me, then I absolutely do need to create a new ring. However, if I have a child, particularly in this project right now with the limited scope of this, we can assume that that child is a ring and we're just gonna pull that out and um, use that as the reference. So how we'll do that is up here, we're gonna quickly, instead of just automatically creating the ring object, the first thing we're gonna do is say, check if ring is null and there are no children. And so we'll say if ring equals null and we'll get the transform of our planet dot child count equals zero. So if we don't have a reference to a ring and we have no children, then we're pretty much gonna create this ring as we did before. We'll say, well, we'll cut this, paste this into here, and we know we have all that. Now, I am gonna add one more thing in here, and this is kind of future-proofing, and you don't necessarily need to do this, but let's say we knew that we were gonna have some other stuff that was childed to this. Maybe we had a moon floating around, or we had um, you know, some buildings on the planet or something that were children of the planet. I'm just going to quickly add this ring.transform.set as first sibling. And what that does is means that we make sure that our ring is always going to be the very first, it's going to be in the zero index of the children. And the reason for that is that now we know if we, if the ring is null and transform, um, and transform.child count is zero, then, um, if we know that we do have children, we know that that very first one is the ring that we need. So what we can do is we can say else, we can just quickly kind of um, double check and say, ring equals transform dot get child zero and we need to get the game object component of that because ring is a uh, game object. And we can also just quickly say that our double check that our ring mf equals ring.getComponent mesh filter and ring 
mr equals ring get component mesh renderer. And with those in place, now we know in either case, we're either creating a brand new ring, getting it, setting the transform, setting all of these um, components and references down here, or we have one that already exists and we can just get the components that already exist on it. And in either case, we're gonna set that new mesh because where chances are we're gonna be building the new, new ring mesh regardless, so we know that we can do that. So with all of that in place now, we can get rid of these planet rings altogether. We now we know if we do an on validate, we'll create our new set of rings. And then if I hit the play button now, we don't create any new rings, but we still have access to our current rings. And we can change these values again and confirm that that is still referencing and working properly. So with that, you now have a way to create new meshes um, and then modify those meshes either in edit mode or in play mode right from your um, inspector and be able to view those in real time. Hopefully this uh, helps you out with your game dev, um, gives you a little bit more freedom and able to iterate more quickly on some stuff. And uh, with that, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.